Football tonight, it's a city showdown over at Noyes Field. Can Central move to 2-0 or will the Benton Cardinals keep their own perfect record and start the year 2-0? Plus, two top teams in their respective classes. Class 4 Savannah traveling to play number 3 in Class 2 East Buchanan. And also, the St. Joseph Christian Lions on the road tonight. Can the Lions make it a 2-0 start on the year? All this and much more coming up tonight on Football Tonight. It's their last football game, and, and um, I, I can't imagine a better way to go out. It's just kind of second nature to us that we're never going to give up on each other. Or we always know someone's going to have our back, and we're going to make a play. There's a whole lot less nerves, at least for me, and, and you can see it on the players. They had confidence going into this game. And with that, welcome into football tonight. It's week two of the high school football season in Missouri. Week one on the Kansas side of things. I'm Chris Roush and very happy to be joined this week by Brett Kennedy. Here we go. It's week two of the season. Let's get after yeah, it. Yeah, let's dive right into Noise Field tonight. Central hosting the Benton Cardinals. Central won last year's matchup. 47 to 13, Reggie Trotter hoping to make it two in a row in the second quarter. Central blocks a Benton punt, and the Indians are in great position for their next drive after a penalty to back them up. Quarterback Caleb Aguilar dumps it off to big Brock Williamson underneath screen. He's all the way into the end zone for the senior right down the middle. 26 to nothing, Central up at that point. Student section for the Indians loving it. Watch this play, though. Right before halftime, Benton punts it to the Cardinals. Macario Barr, who bobbles it, picks it up, breaks two tackles. Watch out, Barr can fly, cuts to the right, breaks two more tackles, somehow stays in bounds, and then watch this, loses his shoe, goes the final 10 yards into score with only one shoe. Are you kidding me? What a play. Indians led 33 to nothing at the half. Benton first-year head coach Corey Bertini didn't see a lot of positive things from his side tonight because the Cardinals just had no answers for Brock Williamson. The senior, the tight end sweep to the right, outraces everybody in the end zone for a long score. Central wins big, 54-6. Indians start the season 2-0. Central heads on the road next week against Raytown. Benton hosts Lafayette next week. Up on the north side now, Lafayette Fighting Irish hosting their pink out night, honoring starting quarterback Jackson Compton, who just lost his mom to cancer. Fighting Irish taking on the Pleasant Hill Roosters. Pleasant Hill won big in last year's meeting. Irish trying to get something going tonight in this one. Roosters score in their first drive on a short touchdown run by Aiden Miner, 7-0 Pleasant Hill. Lafayette coach, first year guy Nate Doherty, says come on guys, we need to stop next time. Next Roosters drive, it gets his wish. Pleasant Hill fumbles the ball inside the red zone on their next drive, and it's eventually recovered by Lafayette's Drake Holcomb. Irish couldn't turn it into points though. Pleasant Hill back with the football later, drove down again, punching it in, running by Braden Bush. He had two rushing scores in the first quarter. Pleasant Hill runs away with this one tonight by a final score of 60 to 14. Other Midland Empire Conference games, Maryville on the road visiting seventh ranked class four Harrison and taking care of business 50 to 12. And Jill Cothy beating Kirksville by a final score tonight of 42 to 26. To Cameron we go, non-conference game for the Dragons taking on Southeast KC. Dragons striking early here with a handoff to Hudson Lauder, who zigs and zags making defenders look foolish for this big gain, needing multiple guys to finally bring him down, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. 
few plays later, another handoff. This one goes to Kenton Gates, bouncing to the outside, slipping through the tacklers on his way to the end zone. Six to nothing, Dragons. Cameron still not done in the first quarter. Dragons with the ball again, and that man Gates again for his second touchdown of the first quarter. Dragons threatening later on. This time it's Lauder's turn to cash in. Dragons go on to run away in this one, 55 to 14. Let's still ahead on football tonight. North Platte Panthers off to a fast start in 2023. Can the third ranked team in class one keep it going tonight against Maysville? And number three in class two, East Buchanan hosting Savannah tonight. We'll have highlights from this showdown next on Football Tonight. Hey, this is Johnny Wolf from Central High School and you're watching Football Tonight. Hello. Can you hear us, Coach? Yep, I got you now. Can you All right, you? I got you. Yep, okay, I got cool. you. Cool. As long cool. as he can hear us. All right, we'll be back in like one minute, and then we'll go with the interview. Okay. So do I need to be down here? Sixty-two, fifty-two, Saint Joe Christian final. Christian win. Good. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to start here. Hey, James, you want to kill our mics? Hi, I'm Deontay Howard from Bidden High School and you're watching football tonight. Welcome back into football tonight, Chris Rauschbrett Kennedy, and now we're going to be joined by the head football coach over at Central High School, Reggie Trotter. Coach, congratulations on the win, and thank you for joining us tonight. A heck of a win for your ball team there, going to 2-0 and on the season. Just all around, it seemed like a pretty good showing from you guys. You know, it really was. Uh, our guys came out and, and played hard tonight and, um, you know, left left little doubt to uh, to what we wanted to do tonight. Coach uh, Macario Barr, that was that punt return right before halftime for the touchdown where he lost his shoe the last 10 yards in there. Just talk to me. What was going through your mind through that play? That play was wild. Well, the, the play, the punt before, we had, we had blocked. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it wasn't very much time left, so I kept our defense actually out on the field. And, you know, not I – didn't, I didn't think they would fake it or whatever, but I just <laughs> – I didn't want to block another punt at that time. You know, it was just kind of one of those deals. I wasn't calling off the dogs by any means, but the way our punt block is set up, punt block, punt return, I had a feeling we might get another one. So I was like, you know what, let's just get into halftime and make sure we're good. So we got into – a base defense, a cover three look with the high safety, and uh, Macario was like, "Hey, get the ball." I said, "Get you know, just secure the ball and get up the football field and see what see what happens." I mean, we had defense alignment up there and blocking guys, and uh, that's something we hadn't worked on a whole lot of. But uh, we made just enough blocks for him to get down the sideline and score. It was nice. It was nice to see. Coach, we've talked about Gabe Fields a lot, and rightfully so, but. 
the emergence of Brock Williamson last year into this year too on the offensive side of the football, how has he come along here to kind of give you guys another weapon on offense too? You know, I think he is filling a role that uh, was really kind of kind of led by Asher Katakis last year. And, you know, Asher had a great season for us. And I think that the different things that Brock can give you, uh, either as a blocker or as a pass receiver, um, it really causes problems. I really think anytime you have tight ends like we have with Dalton Penland and Brock Williamson that can be in two different places, they could be in the backfield as, as fullbacks or they could be out wide as wide receivers, that really gives the defense a fit, uh, gives them a fit. So uh, I think he's really been, uh, obviously he had a great night tonight. So it's been uh, fun to watch those guys really kind of take on a different role for our offense. Central head coach Reggie Trotter, thank you for coming on and congratulations on the big win. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on. No Thanks, problem. coach. Thank you, coach. All right, now move on with football tonight here. Let's just keep it going. We get two of the very best teams in the area squaring off down in Gower tonight. Third ranked team in class two, East Buchanan, playing host to Savannah, who is receiving votes in the class four media poll to the end of the second. 7 0 EB. Savannah driving. Kate Chappelle doing all he can and getting a little extra push. Savages in business trying to tie this ball game up, but later in the drive, it's fourth down. Savannah needs to go for it here. The give again to Chappelle, but the Bulldogs hold their ground and force a turnover on down. So the Bulldogs with the ball back with a little bit of time left in the second quarter, under a minute. East Buck getting tricky, pulling out the hook and ladder, but Savannah's defense holds as well. We go to the break in this one, seven nothing East Buchanan. First drive of the third quarter. Savannah gets a good return and they go to work. Chappelle around the edge, gets taken down, but not before a nice gain. This one also pretty physical out there tonight as well. Later in the drive, sophomore quarterback Aiden Connect offered keep to themselves. Savannah in business in the red zone, but the Bulldogs defense again. Dan Ritter's team coming up big. Smile on his face, he's happy about this too. Hayden Hensley off the edge with the sack. So later in the drive, we're back to a fourth down situation. Savannah going for it, but East Buchanan holding again on fourth down. The Bulldogs win this one 14-0. They're now 2-0 on the young season. Other KCI non-conference scores, New Buchanan falling to Holden tonight. And this one 27-14, while later hosting Trenton and the Trenton Bulldogs winning 27-12. Down to Dearborn we go, number three, North Platte hosting Maysville. And we're going to start with a weird play here. Panthers back to punt. Colton Kirkham having to scramble and get rid of it. It's intercepted, but Maysville gets called for a roughing the passer penalty on a punt. So North Platte keeps it, but the Wolverines defense holds and forces a punt. And then later in the first quarter, Maysville on offense, Chris Gabbard under center, drops back, looking down the middle, but it's picked off by Chance Garber. And the Panthers are now in business now. No score at the end of one. Quick moving game, Kirkham to Jackson Carpenter. Downfield with the nice catch. He gets, picks up some yards, then later in the drive, Dylan Armstrong with the keeper. And he plows his way in. Touchdown Panthers and North Platte goes on to win 32 to nothing in a shutout. They're 2 0 to start the season. Also tonight, Lawson hosting Lafayette County. And they get the big win 69 to 7. And Polo visiting Lexington. And Polo survives 22 to 18 in that one. Down to West and we go. Blue Jays hosting South Harrison. West Platte has won the last two meetings early in the second quarter. Blue Jays up 21-8. Braxton Booth in the gun. Takes that bouncing outside. Blockers in front. And he will go all the way. 50-yard touchdown. That's a good one for there. But the Blue Jays not phased at all. Marching down the field themselves in this one. Kane Corgan with a quick pass for a first down. Then a couple plays later. Corgan drops back, launches it down to Cohen Kite, makes the leaping grab, gets away, finds the end of four, 40 yard score, West Platte 27 16. Bulldogs stopping on fourth down, gives Blue Jays possession again. Corgan to sweep out to the right, Dominic Williams beating everyone to the outside. He's got daylight, struts into the end zone. Blue Jays win this one 45 36. 
Over at Hamilton, the Hornets hosting Gallatin. Bulldogs won last year's meeting in this one. And they get the ball moving down the field. That's an incompletion there. But they would end up getting the win. Hamilton would 28 to nothing in a shutout in that one. All right, well, don't go anywhere. We come back on football. Tiny Cinco Christian Lions trying to keep their winning ways going, visiting the wild cards. And the Knights trying to move to 2-0 on the season. We'll have highlights from their eight-man football showdown with Princeton later on Football Tonight. I'm Phineas Sullivan. I'm Jake Winklebauer. I'm Carson Sag. I'm Trey Ike. We're Bishop of Blonde, and you're watching Football Tonight. Yeah! This is Brock Williamson from Central High School, and you're watching Football Tonight. Welcome back to Football Tonight. Brett Kennedy here and Chris Roush with you. We still have a lot to get to, especially in eight-man football. And for the St. Joseph Christian Lions, coming off their season opening win against the Cab, here we go. Traveling out to face the Wild Cards. Picking this one up in the late second quarter. Christian up 28-18, hoping to score. Levi Miller finds Logan Hubble, breaking a couple of tackles, sending the Lions up inside the five before being chopped down. Final seconds of the first half, Miller rolls out to his right, finds Peyton Hosman, but ends up in the hands of Grant Burris, ending the half. Second half of this one, Wild Cards regrouping, coming out ready to play. Ian Saunders scrambles on third and long before finding his man over the middle. Gets the first down for being shoved out of bounds inside the 10. Next play, Eli Danner gets the pitch, finds the end zone. Now it's a 28-26 ball game. Lions weren't phased though. They had a few tricks up their sleeve as well. Miller drops back, lost his pass to a wide open receiver, putting the Lions back up by 10. And St. Joe Christian now 2-0 on the season. They win. 62-52. Other games tonight in the 275 Conference. GRC crossover. Stanbury visiting Rockport. Stanbury winning 52-32. Not only Valley now 2-0, they beat King City 26-16. Up in Mound City, two historically great programs meeting. The Panthers hosting Worth County. Tough night in Mound City as they take on Worth County. 6-48. When we get into this one, 48 to 6 rather at the half. Mound City looking in search of points, finds one there through the air. Not much more from the Panthers after that. Tigers though moving the ball with ease as they add on six more later on in this one. Worth County would get the win big time, 74 to 18. 
Up in Hopkins tonight, Platte Valley hosting Princeton. PV getting to work fast and furious, going up 16 to nothing. Their defense doing it too. Aiden Black was an early interception, helping out his own cause on defense. Then ensuing drive, Blackford drops back, finds Lane Ackland for a first down and a whole lot more. They're, they're in business, which sets up this. Blackford to Ackland for six. Platte Valley rolls to a 2-0 to start the year with a 64-24 win. Still ahead on football tonight, the South Holt Knights trying to improve to 2-0 on the season. We'll head up to Oregon for highlights from their matchup against Pattonsburg. And can the Decap Tigers or North Andrew Cardinals get in the win column tonight? Highlights from these former longtime Platte Valley Conference rivals coming up next on Football Tonight. Hi, I'm my sister. I've been to high school football show tonight. Hey, this is Lance Peters from Central High School, and you're watching Football Tonight. Welcome back to Football Tonight. Chris Roush, Brett Kennedy with you for a few more minutes, about 10 minutes here. And there used to be an eight-man football conference called the Platte Valley Conference. And in that conference, North Andrew and DeKalb duked it out for years. But after 2015, the rivalry has died down a bit because the conference doesn't exist. No, in fact, they've only played one time since 2015. That meeting coming in the 2020 postseason, but the rivalry was back on tonight. To DeKalb we go. Both teams coming off of week one losses, trying to bounce back. First quarter will start. Tigers trying to score first, and Devin Hall gets up to catch the touchdown pass. Along the sideline, he's inbounds from Landon Crockett. Two-pointer after is no good, six to nothing. The Tiger Band feeding off the touchdown, though. Late in the first quarter, North Andrew knocking on the door to score. Braxton Linville runs it in for a touchdown. Two-point conversion is good. Cards in the lead, visiting North Andrew fans, enjoying their team fighting back. Tigers trying to return the favor, and they're picked off by North Andrew's Jackson Ritchie. North Andrew works their way down the field after that, and Linville says, let me take it in again. How about another touchdown? Cardinals 16, Tigers 6 at that point. Second quarter we go. Tigers down by 16. They need to strike, and they do. Touchdown here to Ryder Hawk. The two-point conversion no good. 24 to 12, Cardinals. North Andrew gets the win by a score of 62 to 18. Other non-conference scores, Albany visiting East Atchison, while Bramer 
on the road to North Shelby. Albany gets the win 22 to 18. Bramer 86 to 46 over North.